March 27th and I need to do my March check-in so I'm having a bit of what I refer to as cast on we that I want to cast things on but I don't know what to cast on so I instead I just sit there and knit my um, blankets so I've knit a lot more on my blankets uh, I've been working on some pretty big stuff at work so Anyway, that's been taking up a lot of my time. And then um, Megwin has been having homework issues again. So, yeah, just trying to keep it simple and easy for my projects. There's Ada. How you doing, B? Hello. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, so I've been doing The Coziest Memory by Kemper Ray, and I have completed two strips. So I decided to make my blanket 26 um, squares wide, and that's because it originally came from Advents from Jessica. And, um, you know, she usually sends me 25, and then she's got, like, something extra uh, for Christmas so I thought, okay, I can do the 25 days, and then if I have a full skein or something from advent calendars or whatever, that could be the last square. That was the idea. However, I started also pulling out just, I've got a crap ton of minis from, um, I used to do mini skein swaps with other people through um, Molly's podcast, A Homespun House. And so we did like international ones where we just sent around a bag of minis and you could just take however many you want and just replace them with that same amount. And so I have a ton from that. I've got a ton from um, participating all the years in the mini skein club from No Makers. So I have years worth of those. This is one of them. I think this is like tomatoes was when she did a, um, she always had like themed bundles. There was a garden themed bundle. Um, and I also have a ton of the Gilmore Girls themed ones because the Yarn at Home Mom did a mini skein set for every season of Gilmore Girls. So I have, I think there's seven seasons. So I have seven seasons worth of, there were 10 or 12 minis in them. So it's a lot. I have quite a few of these opal mini skeins. If any of you got these opal advent calendars when they were making those. So I have lots of those. Not to mention just leftovers from my projects. So anyway. I think these are Adelaide Cottage minis when she was doing the Harry Potter mini skeins sets. So anyway, tons and tons. So they are in this bag now this isn't even all of them this is just one set of what I think I'll use in the reasonable future um, yeah so what I'm doing is I do a strip and you can't actually add on to the strip until you work in the ends so all of my ends are worked in for that first strip and the second strip I'm starting to work in the ends because I need to add on squares but anyway, this is wide enough for my king size blanket with the 26 squares. Currently working on this one. It's sparkly in green with rainbows. It's very pretty. Yeah, so that's just a little check-in on my coziest memories blanket. And then I got the uh, folklore collection first month in this worm from Plies and Hellhounds. So this is going to be a summer top. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but it's so pretty. So pretty. Yeah. So I'm going to leave it there for right now, but I will check back in later today. What are you doing, Ada? She knows the camera's out. She's not coming.
<laughs> Good morning, everyone. It is March. I was supposed to say May 31st. <laughs> it's March 31st. Um, so I wanted to do just a little recap of what has been happening in March. So lots and lots of family stuff, lots of work stuff. And I really have been, like I said, the last little bit that I was able to record, uh, mainly focusing on blankets just because they are easy. Um, tons and tons on my coziest memory blanket, which I'm predominantly using minis from Jessica, using some no makers minis, um, the Gilmore Girls minis, minis from Swaps, etc. That's been a lot of fun. It's really just hitting the buttons for me right now. Um, I did cast on for a new project last night, which is one I've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, I bought this pattern from, gosh, I did not blend my blush in very well. <laughs> I bought this pattern from, shoot. What is her name? Crap. Um, she does gradients. Like paint box gradients. I'm going to have to get up and get it. Okay. Ah. Good times. Anyway, I'm going to go find that out. Let's, let's go together, shall we? Oh, because I have a paint box gradient up here, which I have never knit with. Fiber Optic. I bought it from the Fiber Optic booth many a year ago when I bought this paint box gradient. I have three of them um, because I thought that was how much that it took to knit a sweater for me. I don't know. No, that's probably mm, for a full long sleeve sweater, probably safe. Um, Cause it's 450 yards per paint box set. She doesn't even make them this way anymore. She actually, um, gradient dyes a ball of yarn. Um, so it's, it is actually capable. This is, if you can't see it because of all the glare, it's tons of minis. And this is the chocolate to aqua um, gradient. I don't know if she even does this one still, but the idea was to knit a sugar maple tea. Now that probably only needed to, because it's a short sleeved top. It has yardage on it that for my size, supposedly I need 1200 yards, which is ridiculous because I could knit a long sleeve full length sweater with less than 1200 yards. Um, I usually have a pretty decent bit of that third skein left. If it's like a 400 and blah, blah, whatever, 443 yards is what uh, Plies and Hellhounds Marie Cutie is. And for these, that third skein, I have a pretty decent size um, leftover that I probably could make child socks with. So anyway... 450 is even more than that. That's probably going to be the YouTube uh, screenshot because whenever I make that weird face, that's the face that YouTube wants to make be the screenshot, which drives me flipping crazy. It's like, I'm making nice faces the whole time. But the one that you capture for the cover, it's always the one with the stupid face, YouTube. I digress. Anyway. So I bought the sugar maple tea pattern with that paint box gradient. I think I was pregnant with Meg's. Um, so 13, 14 years ago, I bought that. It's a long time. It's been sitting in my stash. But anyway, I'm not making it with that. I think I'm going to use that for something else. I feel like I want it to be a V-back tee by Jamie Hoffman. Jamie Hoffman, I think. Um, so the Sugar Maple Tea is by Karina Spencer. Unfortunately, I have the pattern set so that um, the picture is on the inside. It's all pattern. 
sticking out right now because this more blog bloggy style format means I don't have a lot of plans. I just pick up the camera when I feel like it. So it's raw, uncut. Anyway, it looks like this. So it's got like an asymmetrical bottom. Um, there's kind of a slip stitch pattern down the front off set to one side. So it is a V-neck, but kind of offset to one side. It is short sleeve, top down in the round. Um, and it has that flared out skirt thingy. So I don't think I'm going to do the flared out skirt bit, but I, of course, I'm doing that symmetrical or asymmetrical detail on the front. Um, so I cast on for the size 40 and I am using my Lavender Loon advent calendar not advent calendar um solstice calendar so it was 20 days which i think will be perfect for this tea because it's not i don't have 25 minis and then i've got a full size skein that i can fill in with if i'm running out also the day one color is closer to the um the full skein and I wanted this color closer to my face because it starts out with like a dark navy bluish, but it really quickly goes into like a light, how to describe it. I should just get it because I need to put it in this bag anyway. I need to find another project bag because that's thrown in there with my pine crop, pine creek crop. Um. So if you look in the center of the cake, you can see it's this color that's got the string hanging out. Maybe this way is better. Um, but it very quickly transitions to these very light blues that then fade into kind of yellowy, then pink, then back to this like lavender blue pink combo. And that goes over into this ball in the center out into those turquoises and then to the purples. I love the purple. I don't have anything super purpley and I think that'd be pretty up closer to my face. Um, so I'm gonna do that. So I'm working it backwards. So this is day, day 20 that I'm starting with and I'm working from the outside of the cake. I'm gonna work inwards and then I'll work from the outside of the cake inwards on the other one. And then if I need any extra on the bottom, which is gonna be when the rows are the largest, um, I can dip into my full skein. So that's my thought. Um, so like I said, I did cast on, although we went to, um, this event last night that was a coffee house. So it is like all the choir and band people for middle school and maybe high school, I think high school too, um, did, they could like solo perform, but everybody brought treats and they just had a lot of tables set up. People brought board games and it was more like you hang out and people perform, but it wasn't like a full on concert with all of the, you're going to sit there quietly and listen. Talking was encouraged and stuff. So, um, I wanted a project to bring for that, but, um, Joshua was kind of bored if there wasn't something going on. So, um, I was playing a board game with him, so I didn't really get anything done on him. In fact, I don't even think I took it out. Maybe I took it out and did one row. <laughs> but I did cast it on. I'm a little concerned that the neck is really big. So I'm hoping that this isn't one of those patterns where the way they scaled it is by just making the neck bigger and bigger. Because just because you are larger in your bust does not mean you have a big neck. And a lot of designers kind of make that mistake um, of everything gets scaled up, not just the proportions of the, the shoulders and bust. So we'll see. Um, that slip stitch might also pull it in a lot. I don't know. I there's very little ribbing and it didn't call for using a smaller size needle on it. That's probably what I should have done is I should have used a smaller size needle on this tiny bit of ribbing to pull the neckline in a little bit. But, um, 
yeah, I'm going to see how it goes. I'm using size four needles because the gauge that it called for is a little bit smaller than what I typically get on a size five needle. I didn't want to swatch. I'm going to live with the results of that. I'm also okay with ripping it back. So do what you do. I have my um, Gilmore Girls Wee Ones stitch markers on it. So we've got a Paul Anka and a snowman and a cheeseburger and a to-go cup of coffee. And then I also added on this little charm from Charmed and Dangerous. That's a brownie with uh, ice cream and chocolate and sprinkles because... That is definitely something that the Gilmore Girls would have eaten. So I'm working on that now. Um, I'm just going to, I think, let the yarn transition how it transitions. Because I do think that I will need all of it. I have, like I said, the two... This is basically the equivalent of two skeins of yarn. Um, with Sam's advent calendar. Which should be perfect for a short sleeve tee. I basically use two skeins of yarn. So that's my plan. Um, it is going well. I have knit a little bit more on my Pine Creek crop, which is also Gilmore Girls themed, but it's been sitting on my needles for quite a while. So I cast it on after I did all of the salty air teas last year. I wanted to do another of Sam's designs. It's a little bit longer on the design. Um, And then I just put it aside, I think because it was starting to get cold, so I didn't think I would finish it in time to wear it, but I want it for this summer. I love this color. This color is Vicious Trollop, um, which is a Gilmore Girls thing, um, and it is from the Yarn at Home Mom, and it's glitter. It's a sparkle base. So nice. Uh, but I do have like a taupe colored skirt that's a long skirt with buttons down the front and pockets. And I really want this sweater to wear with it. So, um, yeah, that's on my needles too. However, it does have charts, obviously. So, um, I just haven't had the brain power for charts. That's the reason why Josh's sweater isn't really getting worked on right now is because it has three charts that I have to work on simultaneously and I just don't I just don't have the brain power for it right now um, I did get out yarn for him um, about a month maybe two months ago to make the uh, the so basic raglan by Maxim Sear I have measured him now and I know what size I'm gonna knit so that will probably be going on the needle soon because that's going to be nice and simple. It's top down raglan for men um, with positive ease. So really straightforward, just one color. I'm not doing anything fancy schmancy. So I'll be using um, helical knitting. This is the yarn. I think I showed it in January's thing, but I didn't cast it on. It was going to be one of my 12 cast ons, but um, I just didn't have time to measure Josh, so it didn't get cast on, but it's all wound up. So I definitely am going to cast it on now because I know what size to do. Um, he basically is fitting into like a 3XL, 2XL, no, an XL, an XL. Uh, just the upper arm circumference, I'm not sure about. But I think if I pick up extra stitches on the sleeves and just don't decrease as quickly, that that will be fine for the sleeves fitting him. Let's check in on Ada. It's so hard to point with the camera. It's all opposite. There she is. Sleeping like peers do. That's the Ada report. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's Friday. I have two meetings today. Depending on how those go, I may try to take off early because it's been just a really stressful period for things. Um, and I just need a break. So I would like to be able to just chill and sit and knit for a little while. Um, 
I just finished a really cute book yesterday called Wicked Ugly Bad. It is like a fairy tale-ish story. So a story set in the fairy tale world, but not. Um, so it's kind of the Cinderella story, but in this one, Cinderella is like nuts, like crazy. Um, and has a lot of weird fetishes and stuff. And so Scarlet, who is one of the ugly stepsisters, is has been imprisoned by Cinderella because she tried to break up Cinderella and Charming's engagement. Um, and she's imprisoned in this place called the Wub Club, which is the Wicked Ugly Bad Club. And it's like a high security prison for all the baddies in the fairy tale realms. Um, so she's in there with like the Big Bad Wolf, the Bridge Troll, Rumpelstiltskin, Avenant, who is like Beast, um, Esmeralda, so the Wicked Witch from The Wizard of Oz. And uh, basically they decide they're going to make a prison, they're going to stage a prison break uh, so that she can go and stop the wedding between Charming and Cinderella. And it's really, really funny. I love the Big Bad Wolf. His character is a shifter. So he's a werewolf shifter. And he's like super funny and really evil. And it comes out that like Scarlet is actually good. And it's hilarious. I highly recommend it. And there's a whole series of them. So the next one is like the Beauty and the Beast retelling. Which basically they're setting it up that Belle and Avenant, who's the Beast... Um, have been like childhood rivals for forever and they went to school together and they were always like trying to outcompete each other and uh, she ends up like taking over his kingdom like staging a hostile coup takeover <laughs> um, and so he's going now after the events of Wicked Ugly Bad to take his kingdom back so it should be a really fun time um, so I recommend that Wicked Ugly Bad if you are looking for a book to read so I'm going to get uh, off of here and go finish my toast because I haven't eaten all of my toast. Don't you love this morning light? I love this morning light. This is my favorite room in the house. It's so good. Um, and I will see you guys later.